My sister ruined my relationship. Now wants help. My sister, 25 female and I, 21 female, have been on bad terms because she did something so heinous that I can't forgive her, even though we're blood relatives. My ex-boyfriend, 23 male, cheated on me with my sister. I've accepted that I might not have been good enough for him and that he wanted someone else besides me. When my sister and I were younger, we had a close bond, but as we grew older, jealousy became a big issue. If I had something, she wanted it, and if she didn't get it, she would go out of her way to get it. She is eight months pregnant with my ex-boyfriend's child. When I found out she was pregnant, I vomited, because what sister would do such things to her sister? I've blocked her and everything, but my family wants me to contact her. Her baby's father is nowhere to be found and hasn't been seen since the third trimester. And I know this because my mother likes to gossip a lot and lets things slip out without knowing. I told her I didn't want to hear anything about my sister or my ex-boyfriend, but she insisted on me hearing everything. My mother once told me that my sister and her baby's father got into an argument because he was talking to other girls, and he put his hands on her and pushed her down the steps, causing her three fractured bones. But she still went back, and I don't know why, but she wanted him so she has him. He never put his hands on me, so I'm not sure where he got it. He was never violent with me, so I don't know how it all became. But this was the start of their relationship, and I never got into it because I didn't care because she wanted him and they wanted each other, and I stayed distant. There was a time when she wanted to come over to my house after they had an argument, but I told her to not call me ever again. Then my mom called me the other day and said that my sister needs a place to stay because she can't pay her bills and will be evicted in 30 days for failing to pay rent. She doesn't have baby food, clothes, or anything for the baby and she doesn't have any money. That struck me as odd, because you have plenty of time to shop for the baby. I suppose her baby daddy paid for it until he left? My mother and I argued, because I was not going to let her into my house, and told her she could stay at hers. But she said we were sisters, and needed to stick together. I can't tell you how angry I was when she said that. I hung up on my mother because I couldn't believe what she was saying. So when I was depressed and suffering from mental health issues as a result of my boyfriend's cheating, did anyone come to my aid? No. Instead, they console my sister. What irritated me even more was that my mother gave my sister my new phone number, and I kept getting messages, calls, and voicemails from her asking for my assistance. I texted her one thing and told her she should go find her baby daddy instead of bothering me to help her when she never cared about me in the first place. She wasn't happy about the text, but I didn't care. She went on about how I'm not a real sister and how she'll be poor. Am I the a-hole? Now for the top comments. Ah, well, she is not a real sister since she decided it is a good idea to sleep with your boyfriend. Play stupid games, win stupid prizes. It's not your problem she has no money at else. It's her fault. Her stupid decisions and actions, not yours. Block her. Don't let her in. This is not your problem. Not the a-hole. Maybe also block your mother. My sister just became a single mom, and all of a sudden, it's important to support family according to my mother. Um, no. They had 10 years to fix their act. I'm not breaking no contact because she needs money and surrogate daddy. Not the a-hole. She should consider placing the child for adoption if she is having that much difficulty. You're not accountable for it. Correct. But if we are being honest, the sister bond was broken the moment the sister betrayed Opie. If Opie's mom is so concerned about her poor pregnant mistress of a daughter, then she needs to open her own front door, instead of her gaslighting mouth, and welcome her child and soon-to-be grandchild into her home with open arms. Cause nope. Change your phone number again and don't give it to your mom. If you need to call your mom, you can create a Google Voice number to call her from, so she doesn't have your direct number. Next story. Am I the a-hole for keeping the money my parents gave me to travel to see them because my brother was there? My brother was abusive to me growing up, in every way you were imagining. My parents covered for him and sent me away to live with family so they could take care of him rather than sending him to jail. I have not seen them or spoken to them in 10 years. That's the way I like it. My father is taken ill and he wanted to make amends. He wanted me to come see him. I said no. I did not have the time or money to take time away from my job. But my parents offered to pay for my trip and to make up for the money I will miss out on since I have no PTO. So I agreed, on one condition, that I did not want to see my brother at all. If he was there, I was leaving. He was there. I left. I had already made arrangements with a friend in that city just in case. It is a friend from university whom my parents don't know. I also blocked them on my phone. 
I spent the week enjoying my hometown and seeing friends and family, and then went back home. My parents thought the best way to handle it was to call me out on social media for taking their money to come see my dying father, then spending the time having fun. I did not see any of it since I was enjoying my life. But when I got to the airport, I did check my Facebook, and there were the posts and comments from their friends and family who did not know the story. So I replied that I had indeed accepted their money to come see my father, and the only requirement I had was that my piece of trash brother not be anywhere near me. I explained why I did not want him near me. I explained why he should be in jail. I explained that I was not involved in their lives because they got rid of me to defend him. This has started a massive fight with my parents and their friends and relatives. Mostly about them not telling people all the particulars about my brother and allowing him near children. And people saying that I should not air dirty laundry and that my father was dying and I was adding to his stress. I kept the money because I needed it and I went like I agreed. Not the a-hole. I agreed in one condition. I did not want to see my brother at all. If he was there, I was leaving. This is called a healthy boundary. Bravo for setting it correctly and enforcing consequences when the boundary was broken. You're already no contact with them. Who cares what they say in social media? Plus, people are telling Opie not to air dirty laundry when the parents did it first. Funny how it's okay in one instance but not in Opie's. I agree. Opie should clearly state to those people that she didn't air the dirty laundry and a trauma of 10 plus years ago until her parents used Facebook to try to shame her and she was forced to defend herself. Call out every victim shamer and then move on. Opie sounds amazing. Not the a-hole. You gave them one condition and your father, one, was the one who wanted to make amends. Two, didn't keep his part of the promise so he cannot cry about the money. Three, he tried to expose you in social media. Not your problem he gets caught lying about what really happened since they took the initiative to make it public. Four, funny wasn't thinking of being stressed or dying while trying to call you out on Facebook. To be fair, I'm pretty sure it was my mom posting. My father isn't big on social media, but she knew the deal. Still, she posted about a private situation to make you look bad, which took the private off the whole thing and could have an impact on your father's health as well if it keeps escalating into a live argument without social media. Consequences. Next story. Am I the a-hole for leaving my stepdaughter's birthday party after my husband threw out the cake I made for her? I have been married to my husband Jeff for a year now. He has a daughter at 12 with his deceased wife. When I first met Jeff, it was obvious that he was struggling as a single parent. For my stepdaughter's birthday, he'd usually get a cake from the bakery. This has been a case since her mom passed away. I thought I'd bake her a birthday cake for her 12th birthday that was last week, as a gesture to show some motherly love and support. Jeff agreed, and he told me what his daughter's favorite flavors are and what she likes and so on. I baked the cake in the flavor she likes and the icing she likes. But one thing was missing and that is the blueberries. And I couldn't include them because I went to the nearest store and they didn't have them. I was running out of time and couldn't get them, so I ended up just leaving the cake as it thinking it wouldn't be a big deal. The party started and Jeff was busy taking care of everything else. He then came into the kitchen and asked to see the cake before bringing it out. I showed it to him and he got so angry when he saw that there were no blueberries on top. He went on and on about how I didn't fully commit to making the cake and that he trusted me to take care of it, and just basically saying that he should have just ordered one from the bakery. We got into an argument and he ended up taking it and throwing it in a trash can. I was stunned as he said, you know what, forget it, I'll get one from the bakery. I blew up and screamed at him. He told me to stop but I went upstairs, got dressed and left. He tried getting me to stay but I refused and went to my parents. He later called and then texted about how I overreacted and hurt him and my stepdaughter by leaving. Also said that I created this situation by not properly making the birthday cake just because I didn't put blueberries on top. I refused to respond, but my parents say he was justified since he must have felt pressured from the stress of making his daughter happy on her birthday. He keeps trying to speak to me, but I don't respond. Am I the a-hole? Did I overreact? Now for the top comments. Not the a-hole. You went out of your way to research what kind of cake your stepdaughter would want, put in the effort to bake a cake after agreeing with the dad on you baking the cake, and baked a lovely birthday cake. It was just missing one kind of deco because you couldn't source it in time. And it went nuclear and threw out your cake? Yeah, wouldn't have stayed around after that either. It is a childish, vindictive, aggressive, and hurtful way to deal with what is saw as a less-than-perfect situation. 
He seems extremely overprotective of his daughter. She's 12 and would probably love this cake even if it didn't have blueberries. Even if she had noticed and said something, she could have been told the shop ran out. And at her age, she should be able to understand that and learn to deal with that kind of disappointment. Are you pushed aside in other parenting situations too? How is your relationship with your stepdaughter? It's only been a year and he already treats you like this? I'd reconsider this marriage. OP is not the a-hole, but also blueberries aren't in season, at least in the US. Her husband is aware of what month her season it is, since it's his daughter's birthday, and shouldn't have faulted her for the store not having fresh produce out of season. Not the a-hole. He threw away a homemade cake because there were no blueberries on it. And you think you overreacted? Has he had explosive reactions like this in the past? Because that's kind of scary. If he reacts this way over missing blueberries, what happens when something really goes wrong? OP this. I get it's his daughter's birthday, but he threw away the cake. And then tries to get you to stay, to have you there to blame, and says you overreacted? I'm sorry, this guy has some serious control and anger issues he needs to work through. You're not the a-hole. Not the a-hole. 1. No cake in the history of cakes has been ruined by not having blueberries. 2. I've been around people who would get this anal about blueberries. It's never about the berries, it's about control. 3. Huge red flag. Watch out for how easily it comes unhinged about other little things. If it's always your fault, look up the characteristics of narcissist and see if it fits that bill. This. Here is the narcissist's credo. That didn't happen. And if it did, it wasn't that bad. And if it was, that's not a big deal. And if it is, that's not my fault. And if it was, I didn't mean it. And if I did, you deserved it. Last story. Am I the a-hole for telling my late father's wife I don't owe it to her to lie? My dad passed away recently. We had not spoken for more than four years. I, 22 male, was his only surviving kid from his first marriage. My mom and two siblings died in a car wreck when I was nine. My dad and I were in a car behind them, so he saw it happen but were not directly involved. After my mom and siblings died, my dad focused on moving on and finding a new wife. I met Trish two months later. They got married after six months together. Trish was a single mom of two kids and their dads were not around. So my dad decided he was going to step up and be their dad. He told me I owe it to them to be the best big brother and to learn from my brother and sister who had been amazing older siblings. I said no. I told him I did not agree to being anyone else's sibling and I would only ever have two siblings. He always said I would regret it and he told me he hated me. He had three more kids with Trish and I never tried to bond with them either. When I was 15, Dad and I had a fight that was sort of us done for good. He read my sister's diary and what would have been her 18th birthday, and he didn't like what he read about her friend having half-siblings and he took it out on me. After that, it was agreed I should live with my aunt and uncle. But Dad was still called sometimes, asking me to regret my lack of interest. Trish is the one who told me he died. She sent me to obituary via social media. I did not go to the funeral, but I did see her at my uncle's house. I left once they arrived because I was only there for my uncle. She tracked me down a couple of weeks later and told me her kids were asking about me and she said I needed to speak to them and to try and be their older brother. I refused to do it. She told me I need to tell them I regret my actions and miss them and dad and want to be part of the family and that I owe her that much after making life harder when I left and leaving her with young kids who wanted to know why their brother wasn't around. I told her I don't owe it to her to lie and say something I don't mean. I also told her to leave me alone. She yelled, and I walked away from her. She then contacted me on social media again telling me I should be ashamed for treating my dad's widow that way, and that I do owe her. I blocked her, but she attempted to reach out via my uncle then. She's clearly very angry. Am I the a-hole? Not the a-hole for not bonding or following her wish to try again, but please get the therapy. Your dad apparently neglected to get you back when your family died, so you can process that loss. The adults in your life really failed you back then. I started going to therapy last year. My therapist was shocked. It was my first time after hearing about the incident. Jeez, the car accident alone would have been enough for almost anyone to sign their kid up for therapy. Never mind garbage that followed. You would think, but no. Not the a-hole. Your dad did you a massive disservice by finding a replacement family so soon. This did not allow you any time to grieve properly. Your feelings, or lack thereof, are no one's concern but your own. She most likely wants you to be their older brother, so you can babysit them all the time.
Yep, she doesn't care about OP or his relationship with her kids. She just wants babysitting and probably will start asking for monetary help. She and OP's dad treated OP terribly. Not the a-hole. Your father chose to put himself over you and your mother and siblings tragically died. Rather than wait an appropriate amount of time and go through the pain of it all with you, he instead sought comfort elsewhere. He made it clear you weren't ready for that. He forced something uncomfortable on you and then emotionally abused you. It then sounds like he physically or at least emotionally mistreated you again due to the content of your deceased sister's diary. You owe Trish and her children nothing whatsoever. Those were her choices that she has to live with. They're strangers to you. It sounds like she and your father have gaslit these kids into believing they have some magical big brother out there, which is cruel of Trish and your father to do when they knew your feelings. But in no way should make you any more willing to become part of something you are, as I said before, a stranger to. It was emotional. He was yelling at me asking how he was supposed to tell his other kids about my siblings, when he had it in black and white that my sister saw half-siblings as lesser generally, and that she thought it's dumb to think you should love them. Again, all this was written about her best friend, and how my sister felt about what her best friend was going through. My dad said things to me after reading her diary that I never forgot, and is dead now, and it's something I will never truly forgive him for. I'm learning to let it go, but it will always be something that made my already poor perception of him way worse. 